Can you hear me? Our picture of the universe has changed a great deal in the last 50 years, and I'm happy if I have made a small contribution. The fact that we humans, who are ourselves mere collections of fundamental particles of nature, have been able to come this close to an understanding of the laws governing us and our universe is a great triumph. On the 8th of January 1942, 300 years to the day after the death of Italian astronomer Galileo, Stephen Hawking was born. With characteristic humor, he later estimated that at least 200,000 other children were born on that day. It seems only one became a world-famous theoretical physicist. Hawking grew up in St Albans, where his intellectual family were deemed eccentric by local standards. Although Hawking's performance at school was average, his friends nicknamed him Einstein, suggesting they knew more than his teachers of his mental ability. Following in his father's footsteps, Hawking won a scholarship to Oxford University. Aged just 17, he adopted the prevailing attitude towards work. Either you were brilliant and achieved great results with no effort, or you accepted failure. Despite this lack of effort, he scraped a first and negotiated a place at Cambridge University as a graduate student of cosmology. Over time, Hawking noticed he was becoming clumsier and he was diagnosed with motor neurone disease, also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. When Hawking's PhD was published in 1966, it was neither widely known nor accepted. His thesis showed that the universe could have begun from a single point. The proofs he worked out in 1965 demonstrated that according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space-time must have a beginning in the Big Bang and an end in black holes. Well, I, I've seen um, some of the greatest scientists of the 20th and 21st century say that Stephen asked a question about black holes in the 70s, which was one of the most profound questions ever asked in science and one of the most fruitful. And it's a really simple question. Uh, Stephen asked, what happens to information if you throw it into a black hole? The picture I think everyone has of a black hole is that you throw stuff in and it's gone forever, trapped forever inside the black hole. Now Stephen's scientific breakthrough was to show that that's not true. Black holes radiate, they have a temperature over very long periods of time, and we talk in millions of times the current age of the universe, but over long periods of time they evaporate away through a process known as Hawking radiation, named after Stephen. And that contradicts a profound, a fundamental principle in physics, which is you can't destroy information. And that was why his question was so important, because it put, he put his finger very precisely on a very simple but profound problem in our understanding of the world. Hawking's work revolutionised the accepted knowledge of black holes and his achievements were recognised. At 32, he was elected as a Fellow to the Royal Society, one of the youngest ever. At 35, he was appointed Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at Cambridge University, a prestigious post also held by Sir Isaac Newton. In 1985, he contracted pneumonia on a visit to Geneva. A tracheotomy saved his life, but he lost the ability to speak. The provision of an electric voice synthesizer operated by tiny physical inputs enabled him to communicate, albeit slowly. The synthesizer enabled him to finish the book that made him a household name. Published in 1988, A Brief History of Time enjoyed sensational sales. His book spent 237 weeks in the bestseller charts and sold over 25 million copies worldwide in 40 languages. The success of the book propelled the author to celebrity status. People were fascinated by Hawking's genius and personal courage. His sharp sense of humour and charisma were displayed during interviews and lectures worldwide. For much of his career, Hawking searched for a theory of everything. One mathematical law that would unify general relativity and quantum theory. I think the reason the book captured everybody's imagination can be seen on the last page. Because Stephen writes that we are trying to answer questions such as why do we exist? Why does the universe exist? These are grand eternal questions. And he says at the end, if we can answer that, 
and we will answer that through science, if we're going to find an answer at all, then we will know the mind of God. It shows, I think it illustrates Stephen's confidence in the way of thinking, the scientific way of thinking. In March 2018, Hawking passed away. Tributes flooded in for the 76-year-old scientist. Hawking lived with the prospect of an early death, yet survived 55 years beyond the doctor's initial prognosis. As a father, despite you know his, his disability, he had such an acute sense of fun. Um, you know, and he wanted to discover, um, you know, what, what the kinds of things I was into, whether it was hobbies or, you know, pop music. And, you know, he wanted to share those experiences with me, which was great. You know, my sort of relationship with him really developed once we could communicate effectively, once you had the, uh, the speech uh, synthesizer. So it was really after I was about six or seven that I was able to sort of start asking questions about, about space, about, you know, the universe and so on. One of his most enduring sort of statements is to be curious and that's exactly what he wanted people to, to you know, he wanted people to, to be asking questions, to be curious about the, 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 the world around us and the universe. As a brilliant physicist, he used his time to search for answers. As a promoter of science, he and his legacy inspire us all to keep asking questions. 2020 marks Bremont's 10th iconic limited edition. The classically styled Bremont Hawking Limited Edition, featuring a retrograde seconds hand and grand date, contains four wooden discs inlaid into the back of the watch, taken from the desk at which Hawking contemplated the mysteries of the universe, one of his most treasured possessions. This exquisite chronometer also contains some meteorite to symbolize the cosmos, which can be seen at the center of the striking hand-finished closed case back as well as an etching of stars from the night sky in Oxford, the date that Hawking was born. The watch's serial number is printed on paper from original copies of a 1979 seminal research paper commonly referred to as the Nuts and Bolts of Gravity, co-written with one of Hawking's longest serving collaborators, Professor Gary Gibbons, that sought to understand the thermal properties of black holes. I think he would have been absolutely thrilled um, that his, uh, his life would have been um, commemorated in a watch like this because I think it's essentially it's a distillation of everything that he was passionate about. He would have absolutely loved to have seen the actual uh, build process, well, all right the way through from the drawing board to the actual build and design of the watch. Obviously a lot of what he did was uh, in, his, in his vocation was theoretical. But he loved to, to sort of then come up against actual tangible materials. He had a great sense of style um, in terms of his own wardrobe. And then when you combine that with, the, as I say, the sort of the precision craftsmanship um, and the stunning features, um, th these are all things that would have highly resonated with him. Only 388 stainless steel and black dial, 88 rose gold with black dial, and 88 white gold and blue dial pieces will be made. To complement the 41 mm men's Hawking model, Bremont is also introducing a limited run of women's watches as part of the collection. Unlike the men's edition, it features a dial entirely made from meteorite and is beautifully paired with polished nickel hands. Turning the watch over reveals its open case back through which an exquisite and intricately hand-finished black hole automatic rotor can be seen. The case measures 34 millimeters in diameter with diamonds inset into the bezel, as well as the index markers on the dial. This is the first time Bremont has ever used diamonds within any of its collections. The Stephen Hawking Foundation was set up uh, by my father during his lifetime to uh, facilitate research into cosmology, astrophysics and uh, fundamental particle physics. It has a second very uh, important uh, purpose which is to um, support work relating to motor neuron disease and uh, those living with the disease. Some of the, uh, the proceeds from this, uh, this project will of course go towards supporting the ongoing work uh, of the Stephen Hawking Foundation. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious.
and however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do, and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. Thank you for listening.